Hi, once again, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg. Welcome to CBS Sports' exclusive coverage of the road to the Final Four. We have a full day of first-round action coming your way. Our early games include St. Bonaventure, Kentucky, and Creighton, Auburn in the Midwest, while in the West, the Sycamores of Indiana State meet the Texas Longhorns, and Winthrop takes on Oklahoma. In our second set of games in the Midwest, Samford meets Syracuse, and the other Blue Devils, those of Central Connecticut State, take on Iowa State, while in the West, Dayton faces Purdue, Southeast Missouri State, State battles LSU. Clark Kellogg along with me, and we have agreed to be mic'd all throughout the NCAA tournament, which is a good thing. What are you thinking as this thing gets underway? You know what? You go back to last weekend. All of the upsets we had in the conference tournament championships would lead most people to believe that those upsets will continue. And while I think we're going to have great spice in the tournament, I think today we're going to see all the higher-seeded teams prevail in very intense competitive games. All right, you will be fined if you take that microphone off. Oh, it's not time. coming off. All right, all right, Clark, a timeout here in the road to the Final Four. We'll continue in a moment. It's that time, first action of the first round. Coming up, some of you will go to Minneapolis for the Midwest matchup between Creighton and Auburn. The rest of you will head to Cleveland for St. Bonaventure against Kentucky. Those of you slated to see Indiana State take on Texas or Winthrop against Oklahoma in the West, we will get you to those tips at 1240. Meanwhile, enjoy the games, everyone, here on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Oldsmobile, the Delta Faucet Company, Wendy's Crispy Chicken Nuggets, and by Bud Light. Cleveland, Ohio, we welcome you to the Cleveland State University Convocation Center for first round action of the Midwest Regional. The 12th seed bodies of St. Bonaventure at 21-9 take on the 5th seed Kentucky Wildcats at 22-9. And, and of course, this Midwest region has the number one seeded Michigan State Spartans who will play later tonight against Valparaiso. And a pleasant good morning and good afternoon wherever you may be. Kevin Harlan alongside John Sunbold. Tremendous excitement here in Cleveland with the Kentucky Wildcats a bit tempered right now. One of their star players, Desmond Allison, with a DUI charge earlier in the week. And John suspended indefinitely. Well, what it does, it takes away a starter. And now you're down to nine players. More importantly, you take away eight points from a ball club that has struggled scoring. But before you cry for Big Blue, you got to talk about the man in the middle. Jamal McGlure has progressed as one of the best players in college basketball in the paint. First team, all SEC, defensively outstanding. He will change St. Bonaventure how they play. And the Bonnie's got an at-large berth, and their key player is guard Tim Wynn. Well, Tim Wynn is a control factor for St. Bonnie. Offensively and defensively, he is a big player, but he's only 5'11". Offensively, he likes to push it. He can shoot it defensively. He will get in your face, led the A-10 in steals. Lineups for the Bonnies, Von Pazen, Cyrus, Messiah Capers, Prato, and Tim Wynn. And for Kentucky, Prince, Kamara, McGlore, the freshman Bogans, and Saul Smith, the coach's son. Jim Barron is the coach of St. Bonaventure. He was a point guard for the team back in the 70s. On that 77 ball club, he took them to an NIT title. And Tubby Smith, in the midst of his third season at Kentucky, his first year, of course, they won the national championship. And now Tubby Smith brings his fifth seed Wildcats in against the Bonnies of St. Bonaventure today. Kentucky, first eight games, John, four up and four down. As you take a look at our officials today, Rick Hartzell, Joe Pescatelli, and Mike Thibodeau. And then Kentucky, after beginning the season four up and four down, 
won 18 of their next 23 games. Well, they put in young man Mr. Bogans, and Keith Bogans, when he was added to the lineup, added offense. This is a defensive-oriented team, number one in the SEC, only allowing 62 points a ball game. Outstanding, only allow opponents 39% from the field. St. Bonaventure, also an outstanding defensive team. We'll see which one can put the points on the board. The Bonnies have it. Straight man-to-man -man by the Wildcats. Tim Wynn with the ball right now, picked up by Saul Smith of Kentucky. Kevin, what we'll have to watch for with Kentucky if they'll play a little more zone with only nine players. Knocked away, Patricio Prato inside from Argentina was the intended recipient. 14 seconds to shoot, opening seconds of this first round game here at the Midwest Regional in Cleveland, Ohio. It's Prato with the move inside, working on Prince and outside for Messiah Capers with a miss. And here comes Kentucky with Saul Smith leading the way. And Kentucky will look to try to get easy baskets early. And the reason is, again, they have struggled offensively. And a tremendous difference between these two. An NCAA record, 41st NCAA tournament berth for the Wildcats. Okay, you take a look at the titles, seven. Last one being in 1998. Tubby's first year. And for the Bonnies, they last appeared in the tournament back in 1978, losing to Penn in the first round. And there's a turnover. And Kentucky will come back the other way. And when you're playing against a name like Kentucky, Kevin, you want to get off to a good start. You want to knock in your first few shots, limit your turnovers. St. Bonaventure missed the first jump shot turnover already. Tim Wynn battling Smith, and here comes Camaro. Getting off to Jamal McGlure from Toronto, Ontario. And here comes Keyshawn Prince. Prince is the X factor for Kentucky. If they can get 15 to 16 points, seven or eight rebounds. Much, much stronger team. McGlure with a hook inside, which will not go. The rebound yanked off by Caswell Cyrus, another Toronto, Ontario native. And here come the Bonnies, an at-large berth for them, and an at-large berth for the Kentucky Wildcats out of the Southeastern Conference. Von Paston, listen. Well, Von Passen, one of the most improved players from St. Bonaventure. More physical than he used to be. Has developed what you just saw, the little baby hook. And Von Passen picks up a foul right there. He is a junior from Holland. Probably the key to the improvement of this ball club from a year ago to this year and why they're in the NCAA tournament. Been able to score the ball down low. Solid defender. Rebounder. Keith Bogans inbounds to Saul Smith. Bonnie's in a 2-3 zone from the underneath out of bounds. And Bogans, the freshman, missing outside. He's from Hyattsville, Alabama. Saved on the side. Bogans driving. And outside to a wide open. Prince for three. You cannot allow Kentucky to get offensive rebounds. St. Bonaventure, if, you, if there's a miss, have to make sure they allow Kentucky the one look. Tim Wynn from Niagara Falls, New York. And here is Patricio Pato. Caswell Cyrus working inside on McGlure. And caught by Bogan. And you saw the double team by Prince. Prince is 6'9", though he is slender. And picked up by Wynn, racing to the other end. and kind of got tangled up in himself, but keeps it alive for St. Bonaventure. Launching the three. Well, you notice the speed of Tim Wynn. Nice move inside by Messiah Capers, who gets it to fall. Bonnie's not intimidated early. Look comfortable. And they have the one-point lead. Keyshawn Prince, a sophomore from Compton, California, hitting Keith Bogans, the freshman, looking inside for McGlore. Bogans driving inside. He has the build of a football player, so to see him plow is no surprise. Yeah, it goes to about 205, 210, 65 body. Really wants the basketball. And just over three minutes. Coming up next, it'll be Indiana against Texas. And then Winthrop make it Indiana State against Texas and Winthrop against Oklahoma. Indiana State, first time since Larry Bird going against. Chris Mim and company from Longhorn State. And Patricio Prado, the freshman from Cordoba, Argentina. There's a pass inside. McGlure from Saul Smith converting for two in the foul. Ball inside on St. Bonaventure. Can't allow McGlure to establish a low post position that close to the basket. What McGlure's been able to do this year, 
Take a look at Prada knocking in the long jump shot. Solid shooter. They can get some threes from him. A salute to the Bonnies in the stands. Young man from Argentina, as you mentioned. Von Parson just picked up the foul. And here we take a look at 6'10 senior Jamal McGloy, the leading scorer and leading rebounder on the team. And what he has done better this year than a year ago is establish his offensive game down low. You must double team him or he'll score. And his passing ability out of the double team not only just kicks it back to the passer, but can find the open mid. Nine at seven so far. Both teams have taken like the fadeaway. Six shots, and here's the fadeaway missed by Cyrus. Inside, David Messiah Capers, the senior from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Well, Messiah Capers already two offensive rebounds and two putbacks. We saw Cyrus, who likes the fadeaway when he gets it on the baseline. Thanks. And Bogans with the miss. Rebound by Von Carson. Here once again comes 5'11 Tim Wynn, one of the best under six foot players in the country. And nails a three. That's what he does. Likes to push if he can find something for himself or his teammates. All-time leader in three-point shooting. Makes at St. Bonaventure. And the Bonnies on top, 12 to 7. Hogan's finding Kamara and outside for Prince for three. Nails another one. And change the defense again. Back to the 2-3 zone. They've been in a man-to-man -man the whole time except for the underneath out of bounds. If they're in a zone, they've got to make, make sure they find Bogans or Prince. Both teams have had two threes to begin the game. The Bonnies with the ball and up by two with a little more than five minutes gone here in the first half in the first round of the Midwest region. Win again, launching the three. And Butler inside. Cyrus was battling McGlore. There is Timeout taken. St. Bonaventure has led by as many as five. Their lead now at two. Bonnie's a St. Bonaventure, led by five, now up by two. Jim Barron is their coach. They began the season 12 and two, finished eight and three in a record of 21 and nine. When you talk about that 12th win, buzzer beater over Temple at home. J.R. Bremer knocked it in from the right corner, and that right there propelled them on to. What a great season they've had. St. Bonaventure with their best season since 1978. They've been a hot three-point shooting team, which has already flexed its muscles here in this one as Prado takes it across the lane for two, and the body lead is it four. Off the dribble. Indiana State against Texas coming up, and Winthrop, the 14th seed against number three seed Oklahoma. And a shove inside and a foul is called on Kentucky and it goes on McGlure for the first time if you take a look at Jim Barron eighth season from Brooklyn New York and Auburn with an early lead on Creek well blue collar worker Jim Barron it's a blue collar team hard work last time down Prado beat Prince off the dribble and Kentucky had a hard time in the SEC semifinal with Arkansas off the dribble J.R. Bremer and Robert Cheeks have checked in for the first time for the Bonnies. And it looked like Caswell Cyrus got whacked in the eye. And I don't know if he lost a contact or what, but you can see him rubbing it right there with his Bonnie team up by four, 14 to 10. The Bonnies have started this game 50% from the field. Kentucky, 57% from the floor. Well, Cyrus coming off about with a flu. He struggled in the A-10 tournament. Championship game wasn't much of a game with him on the sideline for a while against Temple. Win inside, tries to carve out some room and finds it again, squeezing the trigger, and this is the biggest lead for St. Bonaventure. Again, the Bonnies having no problem taking this Kentucky team off the dribble, getting shots inside, point blank at the rim. And how do you like Bonnie defense today? Well, right now they're playing with more passion and more emotion than this Wildcat team. We expected to Kentucky to come out with the loss of Allison and be ready and playing. That will get him going. Jules Kamara from Dakar, Senegal. Puts it down with a nice feed from the perimeter. Very athletic Kentucky team. Well, what a tall team. They will stretch across when they played that 2-3 zone for a couple of possessions. We talk about Kamara comes in. He's 6'11". You talk about Prince at 6'9", and you talk about McGlure at 6'10". So they are long inside. Here's the 6'9", Cyrus, putting it up and down over the 6'10", McGlure. And the Bonnies again by six. Talked about Cyrus's ability on the block to shoot the fadeaway. Only 6'9", he's got about 106-inch wing, wingspan. Loves a little fadeaway. With the drive, and coming up next again, first round games. 
as the 12th seed Indiana State. Johnny just said it not since Larry Bird have been to the big tournament against fifth seed Texas with the great center Chris Mim. Yeah, outstanding. Well, with Gabe Monecki, powerful inside. That second game you saw down below Oklahoma, another physical team out of the Big 12. With Nahara. Eduardo will have a Mexican contingent this afternoon. It's Bogans looking inside. Kamara got it from McGlure, and then sidesteps the defender, feeding McGlure inside, and a whistle and a foul on St. Bonaventure. Now sometimes you need a play to get yourself going in a ball game. And from the sideline out of bounds, nobody picked up Kamara, and high above the rim, Jewel is one of those players that slowly learning the ball games. Tenth start on the year now, but Allison is out. One of the great stories about McGore, who is at the free throw line right now, is he actually tested pro basketball waters last May. In fact, he paid his way to camp, didn't get an agent, went out, worked out on his own, but decided it wasn't right. That was the word he got from various sources. He decided to come back for his senior year at Kentucky. Well, always known as a defender. We talked about earlier, now more of an offensive player. You almost have to double team him. He makes you inside. And where he's become better again is passing out of the double team. He finds open teammates much better than he did last year or even earlier this season. There's a lot of great rebound. Yeah, it really is. 12 and a half to play in the half. And St. Bonaventure, they've led by as many as six up now by five. 3-2 zone with Prince at 6-9 on the top of it. Again, long down low. Athletic enough. Driving is J.R. Bremen. Feeding to win. Dancing with Bogan. Shot clock at five. Cross-court feed. Caught by Bremen for three. Solid screen by Cyrus up top. He screened the top guy on the zone defense, allowed Bremer for the open shoot. Bremer, one of the top six men in the Atlantic 10 Conference, the home of the Bonnies, from Olean, New York, a snowy southwestern New York town. And here's Prince in a great steal right here, picked up by the sophomore Bremer, sails in, rejected on the play by Prince. Bogans took it hard, and they assessed the foul on Robert Cheeks. That's the first on him. Well, how about this defensive play by Tayshawn Prince, hustling back and breaking the block on the shot? Kentucky looking to pound it inside, and Bogans has had his fair share of drives today. Well, this is the most athletic of all the Wildcats now on the floor. Take a look at this play by Prince. Bremer thought he had one, made a good steal. Prince comes from a long way away, and you see the reach, the ability to go around the body and make the block and stop the layup. Logan's is playing for the legendary Morgan Wooten at the Napa High School in Hyattsville. And so here we go. With 11.43 to play in this first half. Bonnie's up 21 to 13. And St. Bonaventure really has been in control, Kevin. Solid on the offensive end. Defensively done a nice job. Kentucky, not as much energy as we thought. David Messiah capers for three. Another offensive rebound. Capers Messiah inside. Big rebounding edge. 11 to four in favor of the Bonnie. Saul Smith with the miss. Jules Kamara, Stein, and Prince puts it in nicely for the Wildcats. Well, Kamara, again, we'll talk just about his raw talent. His ability to get to the ball, slowly developing as a pretty solid player. Silas with the miss, rebound, pull down, and here comes Bogan driving inside and bumping into oh, Chiefs. What a play. You talked about his football type body and the strength. He used that that time as he goes to the hole and draws the contact. Difficult. Yeah, difficult shot. He began John on the bench, and the season was a four and four start for Kentucky, as we mentioned, but then he was inserted in the starting lineup, and they won 13 of the next 14 games. You know, one of those guys that just says, give me the ball. He wants the basketball. Now, as any freshman, you hope they make the good decisions, and you have to live with some of them. Cheeks will leave, and checking in will be Nadal Messiah. As 
Bogan, not today, a 75% free throw shooter. And with 10 and a half to play in the half, the Bonnie's on top, 23 to 18. Bonnie's led by 10 up now, 23-18. Kevin Harlan and John Sunvold from Cleveland for Kentucky, their ninth consecutive NCAA tournament for the Bonnie's, their first since 1978. Well, the names listed uh, just in this Midwest, re Midwest region alone, Michigan State, Utah, Syracuse, Kentucky, UCLA. Great names. On down the line. And here come the Bonnies, led by David Messiah Capers. The Bonnies have taken nine more shots than Kentucky, with Kentucky shooting at 63% for the game. Yeah, Kentucky 7 and 11. St. Bonaventure 10 of 20, but 11 rebounds versus six. St. Bonaventure has attacked the offensive glass with five already. Messiah Capers outside to J.R. Bremer with a miss. Leaping rebound by Kamara. Lost it inside, and Messiah Capers you will watch it trickle off him. Good hustle play, but you saw the range of Bremer. St. Bonaventure does not mind attacking this zone defense. They've got enough shooters, spacing. Five guys in the scoring blocks already. Or six, I should say. Good point guard, J.P. Blevins, out of Edmonton, Kentucky. Good spot-up shooter. 3-2 zone defense. Watch for Blevins to try to find an opening. And they shove it inside where it's caught by Marvin Stone, a freshman outside again for Keyshawn Prince, who's hit an outstanding day shooting above the arc. Well, really knocking him home, 11 points already. Keyshawn has shown up. He's got to get the rest of his teammates involved, but they are outstanding offensively. And Kentucky's on an 8-0 run over the Bonnies right now with 9.5 to play in the first half here in this very first game of the NCAA tournament. Bremer, who's from Cleveland, feeds to win, guarded by the 6'9 and much taller Tayshawn Prince. And the shooters for the Bonnies can stretch this zone defense. Turnover right there. The Bonnies get it from Saul Smith. They'll take it the other way. Prince again, launching the three. Stone was inside fighting for it. And here comes Fidel Messiah. First miss on the afternoon by Prince, probably a step or two outside of Gray. Watch that zone defense. Take a look around the free throw line area. That's the opening. If you can catch the ball right there, you cause problems for the defense. Bingo. Messiah hits it on the 15-footer. And get a complete scouting report on the starting lineups for all the 64 tournament teams. Just click on to March Mayhem at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. They count the two. It's 25 to 21, the Bonnies. And at the free throw line is Vidal Messiah, sophomore from Toronto, averaging just a couple points a game, but at 6-6, gives them some size, which they desperately need. Well, they do need it. He can come in and contribute solid minutes. Here comes Prince. Jim Baird's ball club continues to change defense from man-to-man -to, -man to a 2-3 zone, back to man, then to a 3-2 zone, so making Kentucky's point guards adjust. Temple leading Oklahoma early as the ball is saved by Caswell Cyrus. And the other way comes Patricio Plato from Argentina. David Messiah Campos. He started every game for the last three years for the Bonnies. Win to Messiah Capers and picked up by Blevins. Great ball rotation to Tim Wynn who had the open shot. Loose inside and picked up by Cyrus and out of bounds with the ball goes St. Bonaventure. But the Bonnies have led most of the way. Their lead now at four. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg in New York. We'll keep you updated on the game you're watching while we'll take you around the country and tell you what's happening elsewhere in Tucson at the McHale Center. The Winthrop and Oklahoma just underway early on. Winthrop, the Big South champion, and Oklahoma, Sweet 16 team a year ago, Clark. Well, the man in your, schemes, in your screen is the key guy for Oklahoma, Eduardo Nahara. He's an outstanding inside-out player. Oklahoma and Winthrop both like to play a fast-paced game and shoot the three-point shot. The difference could be Nahara inside. Greg Lewis came out shooting well for Winthrop. Winthrop, you feel, almost has to play a perfect game today. 
if not perfect, they certainly have to be on target from behind the three-point line. No question about it. They want the pace to be fast, and they want to be able to get space for their three-point shooters. And they've got about four or five guys that are very dangerous from behind the arc. Kelvin Sampson, as I said, his team went to the Sweet 16 a year ago, has high hopes for the Sooners again this year. Well, he's got a solid basketball team. Nahara gets all of the attention, and deservedly so, but his backcourt is pretty good, too, with J.R. Raymond manning the, the perimeter play for him. Meanwhile, it's just fun to watch just because I know Nahara is one of your favorite players in the country. One of the favorite, one of my favorite players, and he certainly has one of the best names in college hoops. Meanwhile, at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, the Blue Jays of Creighton against the Auburn Tigers. A scare for Auburn early on when Mamadou Njai left the game with a bruised thigh two minutes in, but he's returned. He has returned, and his teammates have shot the ball extremely well to jump out to a double-digit lead. They've shot 55% from the floor overall with some timely three-point baskets made in that percentage. Creighton pulled off a first-round upset a year ago against Louisville. How do you rate their chances here? Well, again, they're the best three-point shooting team in the country when you look at three-point field goal percentage. But again, Auburn is, has the ability not only to shoot from outside, but they can take the ball into paint as well, and that could very well be the difference. Auburn has had to overcome the loss of Chris Porter and uh, perhaps that's made them pretty tough entering the tournament. It really has. Anytime you deal with that kind of adversity and you've had to deal with that for a while, Auburn now recognizes that they need other guys to step up and they've gotten that done. Meanwhile, in Salt Lake City, Indiana State taking on the Texas Longhorns. Indiana State turned the ball over early three times, and that's not good when you're going up against a pretty formidable opponent like Chris Mim of Texas. Exactly, but they've done a nice job on the glass, Greg. Texas usually out-rebounds their opponents by four or five a game, and so far, Indiana State doing a nice job on the glass. Indiana State's first appearance since 1979 in the Larry Bird era. We'll send you back to your game in Cleveland. They're in a timeout. We'll take a break and then send you back to Kevin Harlan and John Sunbold in a moment. The Kentucky Wildcats on a 13-2 run. They have a rare first half lead, 26-25. And Prado from outside with the miss. Rebound reeled in by Stone. And it was thrown. He was losing his balance, and to save the ball, threw it off a Bonnie player, and here comes Kentucky the other way. Well, now all of a sudden, Kentucky blocking out a little better, not allowing the offensive boards by this Bonnie team, and shooting the ball well on the other end, and that's why they've taken this lead. That was a freshman who did that, too. Okay. And Bogan's another freshman. So Tubby Smith of Kentucky with two freshmen in there. Here's McGuire, a senior. Good steal. And a loss inside. Great play by Tim Lynn. Not unusual. Led the A-10 in steals. Fourth in NCAA in steals this year. On Carson, outside. And the shot no good by J.R. Bremer. Prince on the floor, taken away by Prado. It's probably balled around, retrieved by Bogans, one on one with Lynn. Oh, good hand. And lost it inside, and there he is again. Terrific hands, no to steal. And the Monies can take a lead with five and a half to play in the first half. Prado dialing a three. The Bonnie's much better when they force it inside somehow off the dribble and pass. Make this defense shrink a little bit and then pitch it out. If they don't do that, they've taken long jump shots with a hand in their face. Prado knocks it in open. Bonnie's led the A-10 field goal percentage. A three miss right there by Prince. Out of bounds, the ball ricochets. 5 7 to play in the first half. St. Bonaventure is shooting 44% from the field. And the Wildcats of Kentucky, 55%. As we see Bedell Messiah check back in the game for David Messiah Capers. Now they bring in Messiah Capers and they take out Wynn. The two Messiahs at a Catholic university? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they expect some miracles there. How can they lose? Huh? How can they lose? Stone will check out. So Bogan speeds it to Prince. McGore is in there with Kamara. And Blevins remains. Underneath out of bounds, the 2-3 zone, you've got to be careful of Blevins. Blevins has knocked in two jumpers. The first one, they gave him a two and not a three. Second one, they gave him a three. Bonnie's by two. Here's Blevins. Prince tries to carve in something with Kamara. And driving his Hogan's inside, which ties the game at 28. The Kentucky Wildcats, the fifth seed against St. Bonaventure, the 12th seed. Bonnie's doing a nice job at overloading 
the side on this zone defense. It means they'll put a guy in the corner and on the wing. Make that low position player decide which one he wants to cover. On Bronson fell. Bogans was in there taking with him. And McGlore was the last to get him. And he now has his second personal foul. McGlore has two. And that leads all Kentucky Wildcats. And that is you take it around. And Auburn with a lead on 10th seed Creighton. Quarters out for Auburn. And that team is two and four. And Chris Mim in Texas with a one-point lead on Indiana State. Prado. Messiah Capers on top, picked up by Blevins. Swinging it around. And McGlure goes to the sideline with his two personal. Stone comes back in. Freshman Stone. And here comes Bogans the other way. Saul Smith, the coach's son, inside the Kamara. Back out to Smith for three. And a foul on the freshman Stone. Saul Smith a little bit inconsistent with his jump shot. Like to get off to a good start, knock in the first couple, get a good look. So we're tied. Fifth seed Kentucky, 12th seed St. Bonaventure here in Cleveland. Kentucky and St. Bonaventure are tied at 28. Both teams have hit four three point shots. Rebounding is the same. And again, we're tied at 28 with just under four to play here in the first half. And coming up on the Pennzoil at the half, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news, all the scores, all the highlights, plus a live look at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament. All coming up next on the Pennzoil at the half. Kevin Harlan and John Sunbold. And there you take a look at Tubby Smith, the coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. And here comes St. Bonaventure facing a little bit more defensive pressure now from Kentucky. Yeah, 2-2-1, but not tough pressure. Just backing off, getting back defensively. We've had two ties and five lead changes in this first half. Kentucky's been able to stay in the zone defense. St. Bonaventure missing some jump shots. Kentucky not allowing this team to rebound once again. That's the danger spot. And Messiah oh, launching a nice defensive play. Kentucky's defense, not that shaft. That, though, Kevin, is where you want to get the basketball offensively. You saw Marvin Stone had to come up and made the block, but that means someone's got to be open along the baseline or if you get it there, out on the wing. Tomorrow, set the screen for Bogans, and fighting right through that is Bremer. Shot clock is at 18, so plenty of time, and Small Smith will reload. Dancing is Smith, aiming for two, and gets it the Kentucky Wildcats lead by two on a 17-5 Wildcat run. Good confidence booster for Saul Smith. Missed his last jump shot, came right back down, used the high screen. Tim Wynn didn't stay with him. I'm sure the way the Bonnies have played, this is Kentucky's biggest lead today. They've now got a two-point lead. Bonnies have led by as many as ten. Well, the Bonnies are up ten, so really Kentucky's on pretty good roll right here. David Messiah Caper is missing the shot. Rebound is reeled in and, by Kamara. And that's the more difficult shot against the zone. Ball didn't go anywhere. Stayed on one side, stayed in his hand. He took a shot over a 6'9 guy with a long reach. Difficult. Got to rotate it around yeah, there. really did. Got to make the defense move. Make them work as they did earlier in the first half. Saul Smith taking Bremer, beating the Vulcans on Messiah Capers and trying to fire it inside for Stone. Knocked away and 15 seconds to shoot. Beginning Tuesday, April 4th, CBS presents an extraordinary tele television event. Jason Gedrick stars in Falcone. It's the FBI's best agent going deeper into the mob than anyone's been before. Don't miss this compelling new drama. Falcone coming to CBS Tuesday, April 4th. Play missed by Bogans. A nice punching rebound by Silas. He's got seven rebounds in the game. Bonnie need, Bonnie's need a hoop, Kevin, or they need a better shot. Got to get it off one side there. Finally, they do. Wynn tries to penetrate. Handcuffed inside by suffocating Kentucky defense. And out of bounds it goes, and the Wildcats will come the other way. And you have to understand, when you go inside and you're only 5'11", you are covered with some trees inside. Take a look at the long arms and the reach. Tried to get it around Stone, and... Out of bounds, Kentucky basketball. The Kentucky team, John, coming in of these 64 teams is the tallest team in the NCAA tournament. Well, and you stretch it across. I mean, Tayshawn Prince looks like he's probably 6'4", 5", but he's 6'9", with a long reach. And everybody out there, that's why their zone defense is so effective. And Tubby Smith probably playing more zone than he would. He's only got nine bodies. 
Blevins. Nice spin move inside by Bogans, trying to force the issue, trying to manufacture something. He's got a nice outside shot, but with that body, why not Why not always penetrate and drive? It's been a tough matchup so far this afternoon for this St. Bonaventure team. Bogans has been able to take the basketball where he wants to, either against the man or the zone. First team, All-American, McDonald's All-American, great All-American out of Hyattsville, Maryland. I told you before that he was coached by the legendary Morgan Wooten at the map behind. A great Division I, Division II, and Division III players as that program turned out over his 20-plus years there. Plenty of them, and yeah. uh, the guy on the free throw line's uh, another great one. All SEC freshman team this year, double figures, 13 of the last 15 ball games, and it really, as we mentioned earlier, made the difference offensively for this ball club, I think, this year. Kentucky is coming off a loss in the Southeast Conference Tournament to Arkansas. They had 27 turnovers, John, in that game. Today, they've only got four against St. Bonaventure. And those turnovers were early, so they've handled it well. St. Bonaventure has only made two of their last ten field goal attempts. Another quick shot. The zone defense did not have to play. So Kentucky beginning to flex here with about a minute to play in the first half. Kevin, what you don't want to have as a player or from the coaching sideline, you don't want to take a quick shot and then have to play defense for 25 seconds. That wears you down. And what St. Bonaventure has done is they've taken some early looks the last five or six trips. One shot and out, and then Kentucky works their offense well. Auburn by 12. Texas was leading, and look at Oklahoma on top of Winthrop. Oklahoma losing in the Big 12 postseason oh, yeah. final right game, there. and Marvin Stone inside with a great play. With Allison out, with Desmond Allison out for Kentucky, Stone is going to see more important minutes on this Wildcat team. And taking Allison off out of the lineup, not only was he a starter, but he was a guy that could go off the dribble. So everybody else has to change their game a little bit. Marvin Stone playing with a broken right thumb. Injured that early in February. He hasn't missed any games since then. Kentucky's got a foul to give. We're approaching 10 seconds. Here comes Tim Wynn with the screen and feeding outside to Prado, who finds double-team coverage. Picked off by Salsa. Plenty of time. He's got a two-on-one off the Blevins, sliding inside for two. What a first half by Blevins off the bench. Came in and gave seven points to Eight, Tubby Smith's ball club. 18-point turnaround. Kentucky trailed by 10. They lead by eight at halftime. CBS's coverage of the NCAA tournament continues after this. Two games going on in the Midwest, two others in the West. Clark and I get you caught up on scores and highlights right now. CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the half. Sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Welcome once again to Pennzoil at the half, everyone. Greg Gummel along with Clark Kellogg, our halftime score from the Convocation Center in Cleveland. 36-28, Kentucky leading St. Bonaventure. Bonnies looked like they were really ready for a fight when they came out. They were. They got off to a strong start. Actually led this game by 10 points at one time. But since then, at about the 11 and a half minute mark, they've only scored five. Tayshawn Prince has been outstanding. And the size of Kentucky, I think, starting to wear St. Bonnie's down a bit. All right, Clark. We'll return to the CSU Convocation Center after this message and a word from your local station as you're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by the Chevy Monte Carlo, Pizza Hut, American Express, and by Salomon Smith Barney. The Kentucky Wildcats rock and roll into a 23-5 run to end the first half and they lead it 36 28 over the 12th seed Bonnies of St. Bonaventure Kevin Harlan and John Sunbold here in Cleveland Ohio some thoughts on the first half I thought St. Bonaventure started well but then they played in the hands of Kentucky they shot their first you know every time down the first pass they took a shot Kentucky rebounded better then scored on the other end and let's send it over to Debbie Antonelli Thank you very much, Kevin. Coach, you trail by eight. What do you need to do to get back in the game? Well, we got to we got to step up and make some shots. They're playing as a zone. We got to look to attack the zone, and then we got to keep them in front of us on defense and rebound the ball. Coach, thank you. Good luck in the second half, Kevin. All right, Debbie. Thank you. An 18-point turnaround in the first half, John. Kentucky trailed by 10. 
And they begin the second half up by eight. I thought the Wildcats were a little lethargic coming out of the locker room to start the ball game. St. Bonaventure, plenty of energy. And this, when you take a look at the stats, the thing that jumps out is the field goals by Kentucky. They are shooting at a high margin, 56%. They've only had three ball games all season where they've shot over 50%. They're only a 40% field goal shooting team. So they are on a roll. The rebounds now in favor of the Wildcats, which early on, it was all Bonnies. Kentucky was the best defensive team in the Southeastern Conference in terms of scoring defense and they began to show some of that late in the first half. Wildcats come in 22 and 9. St. Bonaventure at 21 and 9. And we begin the second half with Jules come on wide open and nailing a two. Continue to shoot the basketball well. You mentioned the best defensive team 11th though in the SEC in scoring and in field goal percentage. So what they've done this afternoon is St. Bonaventure has not challenged defensively enough this Wildcat team. St. Bonaventure has gone one of their last eight from the field, and those long rebounds, John, off the iron have hurt them because Kentucky's been zipping the other way. Well, Kentucky now back to a man-to-man. -man. They had trouble the first half. They were beaten off the dribble, remember, early. And Kentucky has a halftime lead. They are 19-1 and one this season. Home loss to Dayton. And Von Passen was defended well there in a shot clock violation. And, it's called and Jim, Jim Barron, and he jumps off the bench trying to get some energy in his ball club. They need some uh, enthusiasm, some excitement. they got to attack this Kentucky team. They can't sit back and be... St. Bonaventure's first trip to the NCAA tournament since 1978. 22 years. And a whistle and a foul is called across the way. And they put that on Patricio Cotter, his first of the game. St. Bonaventure receiving an at-large bid. Kentucky getting the same. Kentucky finishing the regular season. 19th ranked nationally. Nice knock away by Cyrus. A rare steal for St. Bonaventure. As Messiah Capers gets it to win and finished off with a nice layup by Prato. All started on the defensive end. If they can get a rebound or a steal, what happens then, Tim Wynn can turn up the power and turn up the energy offensively, get his team going. Moore tried to save it. 18.37 left, and he did, and Bogans will inbound. There's Tubby Smith, who came from the University of Georgia. Before that, at Tulsa University, Kamara tips it inside, caught by McGlure. Their length is not only difficult on a defensive end, but offensively an advantage. The most successful team in NCAA history, the Kentucky Wildcats. Side. And the miss by Cyrus. Once again, Kentucky comes charging the other way. Tayshawn Prince to the hole. Rejected by Cyrus. And saved by Kentucky. And Saul Smith puts in a shot. Well, the block went right to Bogans. And Saul Smith knocks in another jump shot. Everything going Kentucky's way on the offensive end. 22nd timeout taken by St. Bonaventure. And we'll take a timeout at the Wildcats are rolling 42-30. Kentucky in the first half trailed by 10. Now they lead by 12. And near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we'll select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed over $8 million to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Chevrolet and CBS. Kevin Harlan and John Sunday, along with Debbie Antonelli. We are in Cleveland at the Convocation Center. And Von Tossing putting up an outside shot. Gets his own miss. Drove inside. Bogans, the freshman, reached in and drew the foul. Well, good hustle, good follow. McGlure didn't block out. Jamal was heading the other way to the offensive end. Von Tossing followed his shot. Talked about him in the first half. Again, the improvement of Von Tossing. Typical of the Jim Barron players at St. Bonaventure. Come in. They don't necessarily get the highest recruited kids in the country. They develop players under his system. John, the school has had some financial problems about six years ago. Enrollment dipped and they had some financial worries. In fact, to this day, their coach, Jim Barron, 
does not have a full-time secretary. But the one thing that the 12th seed Bonnies hold on to is at least one number 12 seed has advanced in each of the last 11 NCAA tournaments, including Southwest Missouri State and Detroit last year. And inside, a jump ball called as McGore tried to sky and go for two great defense by David Messiah Caper. As you mentioned last year, the 12th seed Detroit upset UCLA and SMS over Wisconsin. You'll see the block and the knockaway and SMS in Wisconsin. That ball game last year, they sent basketball back about 40, <laughs> about 43, 30 something maybe. Texas and Oklahoma are winning big in their first round games as Wynn was tripped up. Well, he knocks it out of bounds and Bogans might have gotten away with a hand in the back. Tim Wynn went flying and Tim Wynn's got four steals. You said before he ranked fourth nationally in the NCAA in steals this past year. Well, not unusual for the young man, little guy, to get his nice move on the ball. ball. And he leans inside, plunging inside the lane. Rebound is corralled by Prince and a fresh shot clock. And Bonnie's, Bonnie's have had the hardest time with Bogans, containing him either off the dribble. He's created havoc. Here comes Prince with a move to Wiry Prince with the miss. Rebound inside, around by Patricio Prado. That's his first rebound of the day. And Wynn dishing outside, caught by Messiah Capers, missing the three, and it's caught by Kamara. He traveled with the ball, did Saul Smith. Well, the reason is Tim Wynn, again, 5'10", but I think that's stretching it an inch or two, <laughs> not to offend him, but, but Saul Smith was going to move to his left. Tim Wynn is so quick, he got there, almost going to pick it off, and Saul Smith had nothing to do with track. This on exchange between Saul Smith and his dad, Tubby Smith. He calls his dad coach. And, it, call it, dad. and it wouldn't be easy at times, right. because you don't want uh, that other players to think there's a favorable in a favorable position, so it would be difficult to be the son of a coach for the ball court. There's Wynn, picked up by the 6'9 Prince, and McGlore is there as well. On Pawson, back to Wynn, shot clock at 11, launching the three, rebound by Prince ahead to Saul Smith at the other end, and an easy fast break, too. Well, one of the solid rebounding teams in the country is Kentucky, and when they have numbers, they'll push it. When the shot went up, Saul Smith took a look, he saw two white jerseys around the rim he just simply took off. Kentucky winning a share of the Southeast Conference Championship. Here's the 2-3 zone again. The free throw line area is where you want the ball so at least you make the zone shrink a little bit. Make a move. Don Passing from Zudemir Holland. Listen. One pass, quick shot. Defense doesn't have to adjust. They really simply don't have to play defense. Where the patients go on a quick foul called on Patricio Prado, the freshman from Cordoba, Argentina. But they're not showing the kind of patience they did before. It's 44-31, the result with Kentucky on top. And Kentucky, the fifth seed here in the Midwest, leading St. Bonaventure, 44-31. to And they, speaking of the Bonnies, have had a huge drought with six turnovers over the last 1340 and just three of 18. Well, they started so well. Out of the blocks, took a 10-point lead, shot the ball extremely well. Have lost patience on the offensive end, and now it's an uphill battle, down 13. Plenty of time left, but you lose patience a little bit when you're this far behind. Saul Smith going up a three with the miss. Ron Pawson is there to get the ball, and here comes J.R. Bremer. Leading to Tim Wynn. Quick shot, probably out of the timeout. They probably had something designed a little more than Saul Smith dribbling over and shooting a long jump shot. Wynn out to Bremer, going by the defense. So Amara and McGlore finding two. A smooth move by Bremer. Only 6-2. Went against the taller McGlore and shielded the ball with his body. Prince. Knocked away from behind by Messiah Capers and picked up by Brennan, who races the other way. But they can't penetrate the Kentucky job, getting back well on defense. Well, they get back quickly defensively. Now you've got to find patience, but you just can't stand. When they're in the zone, if you stand offensively, then they stand defensively. It, it makes it easy. Messiah Capers knocking down a three. He is a fifth-year senior taking graduate courses, so he is the elder statesman of his team and showing leadership there, and that three-point shot has forced the Kentucky Wildcats to call time. With 14-10 to play, the Wildcats lead down to eight. 
Kevin Harlan and John Sunbold from the Cleveland State University Convocation Center. It is the first round of the Midwest, and fifth seed Kentucky's lead is down to eight against 12th seed St. Bonaventure, and a foul called on the coach's son, Saul Smith. Well, two times now they've come out of the timeout. One was a shot Saul probably shouldn't have taken. And here's the charge, active hands. Uh, I don't like that call, though. Tim Wynn really in no position. Tubby Smith, who we talked to yesterday at length, says this is the first time he has coached with just nine players ever. They have nine players because of injury, and of course, the Desmond Allison suspension earlier in the week. Makes it difficult to practice, doesn't it? Try to scrimmage, try to assimilate some things. As the gift big Sam Bowie, who does the Kentucky radio, get him out there, probably stand around a little bit. He can still play as Wynn plugs inside. And the rebound is held on to by McClure. And Tim Wynn frustrated with himself. The senior had one point blank. Nobody tried to block it, simply missed. Kamara. Here's Prince. Trying to work his way inside. And a foul is called on Peter Von Possen. And he picks up his third personal foul. They need his size. He is the tallest out there at 6'11", the big Dutchman. Also, J.P. Blevins will check back in for Kentucky. And to the bench goes Saul Smith. Now remember, J.P. Blevins, seven points that first half. A couple long jump shots, and then the layup to end that half. Solid contribution. Blevins with the ball, made his high school team as a seventh grader and started as an eighth grader. Wow. Got to be careful, though. Tim Wynn, quick hands, quick feet. Approaching 13 minutes to play. Kamara the screen for Bogans. Rebound saved by Messiah Capers. And here comes Bremer the other way. And Clevin's got in his face. Well, quickly again, back defensively. You got to get to Bremer. Bremer Perfect. Charge inside with a slashing move. It was tapped in by Cyrus. It is now a 7-0 St. Bonaventure run in the one-time big lead of 12 for Kentucky. John is down to 44-38. Well, Bremer has been a super sub all season long, and he has brought some energy to this Bonnie ball club, not only by his outside shooting activity on the defensive end and now by attacking the hole. By his penetration, that makes the defense help side come over, an easy tip in by Cyrus. Kentucky with six turnovers this half. They're coming off a loss in the Southeast Conference Tournament against Arkansas, where they turned it over 27 times. And the Bonnie crowd is into it. And if they can get a basket here, the rest of this Cleveland crowd will join them. A six-point deficit. Kentucky's biggest lead today has been 44-31. Kevin, we've seen it before. Hometown people like the underdog. Nice defense by Tayshawn Prince. Sophomore from Compton, California for Kentucky. And here comes Blevins. He finds McGraw, who is guarded by Peter Von Passen at 6'11". To Bogans inside as he tries to work his way down the lane. A foul called on St. Bonaventure. And this one will go on Messiah Capers. And for him, that is his first of the game. Solid offensive set that time. Good screen by Bogans to come around. He doesn't do anything in a hurry. Keith looks like he can control how he plays. Good off the dribble, good jump shooter. free throw is up and in. He is a 75% free throw shooter. Kentucky program. John has had some interesting things happen since last season. Three seniors lost to graduation. A tragic and a sudden death of a 1999 recruit. Three transfers are left. The 99 team a transfer at mid-season of this year. Not to mention Desmond Allison who is out. Eleven fifty-three to play. We're in the second half, and Kentucky leads St. Bonaventure forty-six to thirty-eight. And Kentucky leads St. Bonaventure forty-six thirty-eight. Wildcats trailed by ten in the first half. Led at halftime on a 23-5 run to close things out. Tubby Smith, the coach of the Wildcats, calling a timeout there. Well, the second half has not been very good on the offensive end. Only four baskets, six turnovers by the Wildcats this half. 
but give St. Bonaventure some credit. Down, not playing well, and all of a sudden they've got a little more energy, a little more life. J.R. Bremer has uh, brought that in from the bench. St. Bonaventure in the tournament for the first time since 1978. Tim Wynn can't get it. Good looking rebound. Yanked off the iron by Jamal McGuire of Kentucky. Well, and when Jamal gets his hands on it, and he hollers like he did there, <laughs> not many are going to give it away. Everybody kind of clear. Smith against Wynn. Saw back in there after getting a foul moments ago. Prince on top, shot clock down to 12. Well, lack of movement on the offensive end now for the Wildcat team. And man-to-man -man defense by St. Bonaventure. Prince, shot Good clock defense. at three. Good Saul recovery. Smith for three. He's only a 28% three-point shooter, missing his third try from above the arc. Prince at the other end, try! Oh, knocks it in. Six to 40, Kentucky. Their lead has been as big as 13 points. They're now down to six. And you hear the crowd in the background getting into this thing. Jules Kamara driving inside on Van Passen. Can't figure why he doesn't finish. And out of bounds it goes. St. Bonaventure's defense again. Well, take a look at this hoop and the angle from where Prado shot this thing. I think he was just hoping to get it off the glass. His teammates might be able to rebound. Two defenders. Goes up. Actually, three defenders. Spun the ball. A little English. You're off the right corner. Kentucky will stay in the zone. This is where they were successful the first half. Bonnie's now a little more patient. Prado and Bremer win. The guys that can knock it in from outside. Win is right there. Hooks it out to Prado. Driving through traffic. Leaning toward the lane. Good Here's Wynn finding Cyrus down low. And a foul called on Kentucky inside. Prince was there. I think Saul Smith. Oh, well, Saul Smith might have gotten from the backside. Trying to help out defensively. And Saul Smith, that John, is his third foul. And you can see what has been a dismal second half for the Wildcats. And it started well. Hit their first two field goal attempts. And then it's just kind of come apart. But always give the defense credit. Good inbounds play. Jim Bingo. Knocks it down. The leading three-point shooter for St. Bonaventure. And at the other end, Blevins missing it. And Wynn gets it again, a three-point game with Kentucky's one-time lead of 13 down to three. Driving his Grimmer inside on Possum, and Cyrus will try to go up for two. And out of bounds and off St. Bonaventure. Boy, you want energy and emotion? <laughs> Bonnies are bringing it right now. And everybody's involved. They're attacking the glass offensively. They're trying to rebound. They're only down three. Let's take a look at our data bank. And there's so many great numbers associated with this game. A big comeback by Kentucky in the first half. But right here well, shows you one. The most successful team in NCAA history, the Kentucky Wildcats, with seven NCAA titles to their credit over the years. UCLA has 11. Hogan's inside looking for McGraw. And finally, he puts it down, even though he faced one defender after another, and it's a five-point Kentucky lead. A little more patience on the offensive in that time by the Wildcats. Count it inside, make the smaller Bonnie team guard. That ends a 12-2 St. Bonaventure run, but it's back in the game for the Bonnies with under nine to play, and a three by Prum puts it down. You better get out on it. Eight points the second half. And he's from Cleveland, Ohio. He grew up here. He went to high school here. And he's back in front of the hometown crowd today. And plays summer league ball games in this building. Rents on top. And Prado has the guarding there. McGlure trying to maneuver his way down. And it finally ends up for McGlure. Back to Prince. Hit three consecutive threes in the first half, but hasn't hit one since. Stone, the freshman, in and charging for the ball on the baseline. And knocked out of bounds by the Bonnies and Tim Wynn. Well, you talked about J.R. Brenner, hometown product. Mentioned him playing summer league ball here, and he has been the ignition in the second half. He's come off the bench not only by his shooting, his penetration, his energy on the defensive end. It's a two-point game with about eight and a half to play as Wynn and Van Passen will check out. Coming in will be Bedell Messiah along with David Messiah Keepers. It's Stone lobbing it inside, picked up by McGlure. The hook won't go. The rebound is yanked down by Bedell Messiah. 
Yeah, here we go. Chance to tie, maybe take the lead. Remember again, listen least. to the crowd. This is going to be good. One number 12 seed has advanced in each of the last 11 years. St. Bonaventure, a 12 seed from Cordoba, Argentino. Patricio Prato knocks it a three, and the Bonnies have the lead. An 18 to 4 run for St. Bonaventure. See how the Wildcats now handle this possession. Kentucky has only gone two of their last ten with the Bonnie foul called inside. And they put this on Bremer, who's all over the floor, but has resuscitated the Bonnies. Well, the energy you want it. We've got one here. And everybody loves the NCAA tournament. Kevin Harlan, John Sunbold with St. Bonaventure, a 12 seed losing most of the second half and then coming back with a barrage of threes and Jim Barron coaching his alma mater finds his bodies on top of number five seed Kentucky 49 48 and when they were down he had more fire than his team did on the sideline and he got that energy in him they hit the last three threes and Kentucky down needs to find a way to score 22 years since St. Bonaventure has been to the NCAA tournament against Barnett Kentucky which has been nine consecutive years Cyrus doing a solid job at fronting McGlure inside He's been able to get in front of him they haven't been able to find him in there Levin's missing the three rebound snared by Messiah Capers and here comes St. Bonaventure a little school of about 2200 OEM New York. Now the Wildcats change back to man-to-man. -man. Watch Tim win against Blevin. See if he can beat him off the dribble. Create some mismatches. Likes a fadeaway. And Cyrus from oh. Toronto leaning inside. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound. Blocked inside with a Kentucky foul assessed inside. And they put that on the freshman stone. Yeah, and he now well. has three. Caswell Cyrus makes a solid move. You've got to finish that first one. You may not get a second attempt. Fortune, the ball came back to him. They have changed it, and they have now put it on McGlore, and he picks up his third as Auburn is taking Creighton down to the wire in the second half, and Texas plowing under uh, Indiana State. With Cyrus at the free throw line, a 63% free throw shooter. Oklahoma rolling. A tough team to play Oklahoma. Offensively, they're as efficient as any team in the country in their half-court sets. Defensively, they get chest to chest. Kelvin Sampson, outstanding coach there. Kamara is in with McGlore, Prince, Saul Smith, and Bogans for Kentucky. Second free throw drops for Caswell Cyrus from Toronto. And here comes Saul Smith with the Bonnies up by two. They led by 10 back in the first half. Kentucky led by 13. And Prince with that wiry frame can't get it to go. Rebound by the 6'9 Cyrus. Well, the value of Prince is you can put him outside to shoot jump shots or put him on the block. That time he missed an easy jump hook for him at 6'9. But what's important now is the Bonnies are only allowing one field goal attempt. They're getting a rebound and they can go to the offensive end. Cyrus with 12 rebounds. St. Bonaventure is shooting 39%. Kentucky 45%. St. Bonaventure's only turned over eight times. Kentucky, 13 times. And St. Bonnie's want to keep the floor spread, use the dribble. Saul Smith slipped. Driving was Messiah Capers. I wonder if he hurt himself. Looked like he took off and on something the, didn't take off with it. On the detonation, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Every body part was moving, just not all together. Yeah, knee or ankle just didn't want to go with it. It'll come out now. 6.08 to play here in the second half. And coming back in the game, Patricio Prado. And leaving is Messiah Capers. Saul Smith with six minutes to play in this first round game from Cleveland. Kamara and Cyrus got there in front of him. And a three second violation blown on the Wildcats. Had McGlure working inside, and Kamara thought it looked like he was going to take the jump shot. He faked once he tried to kick the pass. The three second call was there. McGlure stayed in too long. Last year, as we see Peter Von Passen check in the game, the Kentucky Wildcats came within eight points of the final four. This year, they're coming with their lowest seed since 1987, a fifth seed. And Michigan State ended their run a year ago in the Elite Eight. 
Prado picked up by Prince Cyrus with McGore on him, and he kicks the ball. Well, notice what the Bonnies are doing again. Spread the floor, keep the spacing good, attack off the dribble, see if Von Possen or Cyrus can work inside. Kentucky with the man-to-man -man defense. I like that they've stuck with zone a lot of the game. Well, they've got to get more energy. And when you're in a zone defense, that hasn't been effective late last few minutes. Win, slashing inside, beating up. What a great play by Cyrus. But they have had more difficulty in their man-to-man, -man, stopping the penetration. And they call a technical foul for hanging on the rim, much to the chagrin of Jim Barron. As Caswell Cyrus, who didn't play high school basketball in Toronto, played only amateur club basketball in Ontario. Here's been the difficulty of the defense of the Wildcats. A great penetration by Wynn, and then there's the hang. Was he trying to hold well, himself? Well, now he's fine. And then, yeah, I think that's a little too much. So Saul Smith will be at the free throw line at the other end as we watch the technical after the two-handed slam by Cyrus. Put a little power to it, didn't he? Free throw is down, a 21 to 5 run by St. Bonaventure. They were down by 13 points, and Saul Smith misses the second of two. I think the key for the Bonnies has been on the defensive end. Tim Wynn has been able to get into Saul Smith. Kentucky not efficient on the half court sets, not setting solid screens, having a hard time to get into anything offensive. Kentucky started with four three point shots to begin the game, which they hit. They've been 0 of 10 since that time. When they hit the threes, they got back in the game. And here comes J.R. Brimmer, the steal of the time at the other end. Smith picked up the dribble, got caught. Bogan's lazy to the top side, and Brimmer, Mr. Energy so far in the second half. Well, what a game he is playing the sophomore. Five point lead over Kentucky for St. Bonaventure, the 12th seed. McGlore tries to squeeze it inside to Prince. He fires to Saul Smith with the two-man game and a foul called on St. Bonaventure down low. And they put this one on Patricio Prado from Argentina. And he is nailed with his third. The CBS Sportsline stand of the game. Points off turnovers. St. Bonaventure has been very opportunistic. The complete NCAA tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com. Smith to Bogans for two. Well, tough shot, good answer by Bogans. This is the time of game I think they miss Desmond Allison. A guy that can take someone off the dribble, gives you eight points a ball game. Suspended indefinitely, charged with the DUI last weekend, and so he is out until further investigation, and here comes Wynn. So, so Chubby Smith today is coaching nine plays. A miss right there by Cyrus, and a pickup by Prince. And a travel on Saul Smith of Kentucky. It goes back to the Bonnies. Tim Wynn disrupted. That's yeah, enough to make you take your coat off, isn't it? And wipe the sweat from your brow. Kentucky with nine turnovers in this second half. Bremer. Saul Smith gets the loose ball. Two on one. Prince and Bogans orchestrated well. And Prince gets the two. Yeah, textbook. Two on one break, all caused by the long jump shot of Bremer. Long miss. Wildcats got to run. We have a one point game with under four to play. Kevin Harlan, John Sunbold, and Debbie Antonelli from Cleveland. A pass going for newly instated David Messiah Caper. Yeah, good step out by Carl defensively. Got to make sure Tim Wynn, when he comes off the screen, he will stop and fire deep on himself. Good hand. Nice steal there by Jules Kamara. And driving inside, challenged by Messiah Capers, and the foul right there. Now the key is, did they give him two shots, or did they say pass the ball? And they make him two shots. The three and a half to play in the second half. Kamara makes two outstanding defensive plays in the same possession. Stepped out when Tim Wynn was going to come over and fire it. He stepped out, had to pass it. Then he makes a steal and attacks the rim. 1998 National Coach of the Year, Tubby Smith. First year at Kentucky, won the Final Four. Now he'll coach, be one of the coaches on the U.S. Olympic team in Sydney this coming summer. Always an intensity in his eyes from the sideline. Kamara from the line out of the car, Senegal. King of Queens, Monday on CBS. He's got a great wife, some really cool friends, and a hit show on CBS. Three reasons why it's good to be king. Kevin James is the King of Queens, Monday on CBS. And Kamara, once again, one of the top 30 players in the country. 
Shows UK over Virginia and South Carolina. Played at Oak Hill Academy and out of bounds it goes. But we are tied at 54 with three and a half to play in regulation. St. Bonaventure and Kentucky are tied at 54. Four second half three-point shots by the Bonnies. The difference plus a bevy of turnovers in the second half by Kentucky. Yeah, 10 second half turnovers by Kentucky. Their field goal percentage has gone from 56 the first half to only 37 the second half. The Bonnies have been better defensively. They've gotten after Kentucky, forcing the turnovers, forcing into bad shots. There's Jim Barron from Brooklyn, New York. He was the point guard in the 77 NIT championship team, coaching his alma mater right now. And coaching them in a tournament for the first time since 1978 in the NCAA tournament for this school. And a Logan's principal steal saved by Van Hassen. Gets it out to Messiah Capers. And Pato for three. He's had a big case shooting above the arc, and it trickles in. What a touch for the man from Argentina. That is his fourth three-point shot today, and he gives St. Bonaventure the three-point lead. Kevin, things are going your way. Bogan should have had the steal, could have had the steal, and then there was a tip pass. Went into the hands of Tim Wynn, and then the conversion by hitting about four parts of the rim. How about Kamara setting a screen and a three by Prince, and we're tied at 57. That's his fourth three-point shot. Well, Tayshawn has had a big ball game, needed to in the offensive end. Texas and Oklahoma winning their games. At the same time, here in Cleveland, first round, Midwest Regional. This is the home of the number one seed Michigan State Spartans. They'll play tonight. Well, Prado has had the hot hand. They can find him, the matchup with Prince on him. Van Passen was spinning, pork screwing up, and fouled by Kamara, the sophomore for Kentucky. And that's a foul with 2.23 to play. And John, let's start to uh, talk about some strategy here for both these teams. What's Jim Barron thinking on the sideline for the Bonnie? Well, I think offensively they've done a nice job. They're now spacing the floor. They're making Kentucky come out and guard them. And Kentucky's having a hard time with the quickness. Then they've pounded it inside. And for Tubby Smith, they've got to find a way offensively to get into their low post position. Pound it inside of McGlure. Make the defense double team. Find some open shooters. Ron Parson, a 66% free throw shooter. And now two of three today. And yeah, you've got to... Sometimes not look at the action. It gets so fierce. In fact, when this team and these kids were gathered in a home in Olean, New York, when the tournament pairings were being broadcast on CBS on Sunday, a lot of them said they couldn't watch the screen. They had to cover their ears <laughs> and not, not look at the screen. But where their eyes are wide and their ears are open today, it's Prince sliding across the wow. line for two. Great play by Tayshawn Prince. The sophomore for Kentucky. The push of the basketball after the mess and all, or after the make, all of a sudden, quickly Prince gets on top of him. The ability to hang in the air, the softness of the release. That is a tough, difficult shot to convert. Best player in the Los Angeles and Southern California area. He truly is the X factor for this team. With Desmond Allison out and suspended by Kentucky, this kid had to play. Well, the thing about Tayshaun, if he can give you, again, 15, 16 points, plus give you 7, 8 rebounds, that is the X factor. He's got 19 points afternoon, 5 rebounds. Kevin Smith is reported as saying he thinks he's the most multifaceted player in the country. And here's Bremen. He was hitting all those threes early. Tries inside this time. To the hole! Two. Off the dribble. He's done it outside. He's now done it inside. He's got 15. The Cleveland native has led the Bonnies now to a one-point lead with under two minutes to play. Could we be seeing our first big upset of the day? And what a way to begin as Kamara is handcuffed and gets it back to the freshman Bogan. He's working on from Outside, Prince is at four three-point shots. Van Passen is there, but he's got four fouls. Good help by Von bon Passen. Kamara lost his shoot. Prince inside. Rejected it for the second time by Cyrus to the other end. Two on one. Messiah Capers to win. Count it for two and a foul. Kevin defensively. Here's the block. Now Jules Kamara loses his shoe, so he can't get back defensively. It turns into a two on one. He would have been back all of a sudden two on one. Tim Wynn, little bump with the arm, converts it, salutes his crowd. 
And there goes on the shoe. We know Cinderella had trouble putting on <laughs> shoes at one time. Will St. Bonaventure have trouble putting on Cinderella's slipper here in this first You know, he was standing right there when the shot when the block or the shot was blocked. And all of a sudden he tried to get back. He slips because the shoe was off already. So he couldn't get back defensively. The conversion by Wynn. Tim Wynn. First team Atlantic 10. And Waltrop rebound is hugged by McGlory. A minute 20 to play. Hogan's the other way in a sense of urgency now for the Wildcats. Well, again, the yeah, they have to pick it up and become more aggressive with the ball. Kamara with the miss. Rebound retrieved by McGlory. Back out to Prince. Swings it over to Smith. Tries to ply his way inside. It's Prince for three and a tie. Rebound hauled down by Cyrus. And now you play the clock. Spread the floor. Use your quickness against this taller Kentucky team. Make them chase. We had two number 12 seeds a season ago that advanced beating a five seed. Will it happen today? In the tournament for the first time in 22 years, St. Bonaventure leading Kentucky by three. Let's swing it over to Debbie Antonelli. Thank you, Kevin. You know, it's been 30 years since St. Bonaventure played in the Final Four, led by their big guy, Bob Lanier. But in the East Regional Finals against Villanova, Chris Ford falls off Bob Lanier, knocks him out of the Final Four as St. Bonaventure goes on to play but loses to Jacksonville and Artis Gilmore. St. Bonnie trying to make a little bit more added to their tournament history. And they lead it with 48 seconds to play by three, 63 to 60. And spread the floor, take them off the dribble. Tim Wynn picked up by Saul Smith. The tough matchup for Kentucky has been Prince on Brimmer. Brimmer's been more active with the ball. Difference of 25 seconds, game clock in the shot clock. A miss right there by Brimmer. Picked up by McGlore. Got a push. Kentucky has timeouts. Well, they need a three. Kentucky. As, as slow as they're going, they're only looking for a three. I thought they'd take it to the hole plenty of time for two possessions. Saul Smith. Good screen. Prince for three in the tie. And he gets it to go with seven seconds to play. The Prince of Kentucky off a solid screen. Hits his fifth three-point shot today. Tayshawn Prince. Keeps Kentucky alive. We're tied at 63 with seven seconds left. Prato's been hot shooting the basketball deep. Then beat him over the top with a long jump shot. Everybody on their feet in a 63-63 tie ball game. I was surprised, Kevin, by really the patience of Kentucky. They didn't push it up the floor. I thought they might attack, try to get a two-pointer. They took their time, the solid screen, double pick right there, and Tayshon, who's been on all night long, five for nine from three-point land, 22 points. The game has held six ties and eight lead changes. And you don't want him to throw over the top and beat you off the dribble. Smith's got to stay in front of him. Here comes win by Smith to the hole. Can't get it to go. Saved by McClure. Buzzer sounds. Overtime. And a happy Jim Barron of St. Bonaventure. I don't think in his wildest dreams he thought he'd find himself in this situation. Tayshawn Prince, who is a sophomore from the Los Angeles area, has had Kentucky's last nine points. And here was his fifth three-pointer of the afternoon, which tied the game. Well, I thought we mentioned the X factor was Mr. Prince. Uh, they set everything up for him, the double screen. He's been hot this afternoon, and the reaction from the guy who drew it up and thinks, hey, terrific play. <laughs> what an afternoon. 
And again, Kentucky playing without Desmond Allison, a kid they had counted on so many times this season out with the DUI charge earlier in the week, suspended indefinitely. And because of his absence, Tayshawn Prince and others have had to step up as Tubby Smith is using a depleted bench, only nine players total on the Kentucky team eligible for today. And he has played seven of those players, kept his rotation in and kept everybody fresh. They were allowed, they played that zone defense, which was to their advantage until the bodies got hot and he had to come out of the zone, which wears down your players a little bit. John St. Bonaventure with no tournament experience whatsoever now find themselves in overtime against the Vaughn Kentucky tradition that mystique how they approach it. well it's a very veteran ball club though Kevin they've been in situations this year there's one big ball game so they be Temple at home they've done some nice things I think they know they belong here they want to make a statement this afternoon they made Van one so far they want to finish it and Passon gets it in and the Bonnie's on top by two and here comes McClure off the plebbing. Saul Smith is on the bench to begin overtime. Saul Smith with four personal fouls keeping him out of there. He's got to guard Tim Wynn, so they put Blevins on. Logan's with the ball. Gets it over to Kamara. And the shot clock is down to 10. And a foul is blown on J.R. Bremer. Well, the two options on the offensive end for Kentucky has been Bogans or Prince. Really, Prince has been the first op option. Keith Bogans can take Guys off the dribble, he's more aggressive that time, but the shot clock was winding down. Both Kentucky and St. Bonaventure receiving at-large bids. Kentucky finishing the regular season with a 22 and nine record. First eight games, four and four. Then they won 18 of the next 23. And St. Bonaventure started the season 12 and two, and they finished eight and three for a 21 and nine record. Final 14 and 70, an NIT team in 77. They last played in the NCAA tournament in 1978. Well, and this is a ball club, Kevin. When they lost at Temple late in February, they knew they probably had to win out in the regular season and win a couple of games in the tournament, and they did that. They won at St. Joseph's, which is an easy, easy. They won Xavier, they beat UMass, then they got in the tournament, beat Xavier again, and then Dayton, and they thought they should get a, a bid. They did. And now here they are. You and I are perspiring. You know the players are. Even the ball is perspiring. <laughs> here in Cleveland. Tim Wynn. And Blevins has to stay in front of Wynn. Here's Bremer. Cyrus has come up big in the second half. Working on the floor. Trying to chisel some room. And can't get it. Rebound inside by the floor. Tubby Smith in overtime. 6-0 this year. 1-0 as a coach of the Wildcats. McLaurin. And saved by Cyrus. We're tied at 65 in overtime with three and a half to play. And Cyrus snatches his 13th rebound today. Surprised a little bit about the shot by McLaurin. Overtime is possession basketball. You want a good shot every time down. Win to Van Passen. The tallest box. Spinning inside, losing his footing. And... Kamara picks up the foul for the Kentucky Wildcats, and that is his third of the game, the sophomore from Dakar, Senegal, and that will put Van Passen at the free throw line. Both teams with three timeouts. 68% free throw shooter, three or four, four or five this afternoon. Bonnie's come into this game having won five of their last six. They're only lost to highly rated uh, Temple. But they felt they were getting momentum. And you wonder about the nerves and just the, the overall experience that this will generate as Messiah Capers will sit down and they bring back in their three-point shooter, Patricio Prado from Argentina. But you wonder, you know, Kentucky has been through this now for so many years. These players have. And, St. Bonaventure, on the other hand, uh, even with the veterans, even with the seniors, still experiencing this for the first time. I think what happens internally, though, the mental side of it, Kevin, is the fact that you're disregarded of winning. We come over here yesterday, everybody's talking about Kentucky and Kentucky and all the big names here, Michigan State, Syracuse. And St. Bonaventure believes they should be here. John Cheney said, hey, he thinks St. Bonaventure will beat Kentucky. A little bulletin board material for the Wildcats to look at. Hogan. And Kamara now working on Von Passen with the spin and a great looking move inside by Jules Kamara. Well, you see the raw talent that Kamara has. He will improve every year. 
Von Fossen has to stay in front of him, though. Make Kamal shoot it over the top. Here's a flea by Wynn for the Bonnies with two and a half to play in overtime, and out of bounds it goes. And St. Bonaventure will get it down by one. Well, there you saw Von Possen take the fake. Make Kamaro either shoot the hook shot or shoot a fadeaway jump shot. Most of the time, this afternoon, Kamaro, when he makes a move and you don't buy the fake, he's passed it out to the outside. Levins will leave. And a quick inbound play to Prado. Good find by Wynn. Prado, what an afternoon he's having. And the Bonnies are back on top, 68 to 67, as Saul Smith takes the place of J.P. Blevins for the Wildcats. Smith around the screen, five threes already for Prince, and a foul called on Patricio Prado. And he now has four. We talked about his afternoon, 20 points. Shot the ball extremely well from the outside. Kentucky shooting 48%. They've hit six threes. St. Bonaventure shooting 41%. They have hit nine threes. Kentucky with 16 turnovers and the Bonnies with nine. And Tayshawn Prince knocks in the first. Fifth seed, Kentucky. Ties the game at 68. Auburn by seven over Creighton. Now the Wildcats have a lead. Texas by 10 over Indiana State. The Sycamore is their first appearance since the late 70s when they had Larry Bird. And Oklahoma by 21, beating 14th seed Winton. Under two to play in overtime. The spinning move of Wynn gets it off to Don Passon. It is he went up on the shot, and a foul is called inside on Van Passen. Couldn't tell if it was Kamara or McGlure who got a piece of that ball from the shot going up. They got deep enough in the paint, and Wynn makes a spinning move, and it might be yeah, Kamara right here. Take a look. Blocks that ball. Prince comes back from the outside to, to recover it. Not surprising. 24 points, 6 rebounds. Tayshawn has been everywhere this afternoon for this Kentucky team. And five fouls for Van Passen. He is the tallest Bonnie with a 6'11 frame. And now Kentucky back at the free throw line where today they have as a team gone 13 of 19. St. Bonaventure from the free throw line in contrast has gone 5 of 10. UK up by one. St. Bonaventure led by 10 in the first half. Kentucky came back to lead by eight at halftime. A 18-point turnaround in the first half that led a 23-5 Kentucky run to end the first half. Kentucky was eventually up by 13, and that's when St. Bonaventure John Sumpel began launching the threes and taking advantage of Kentucky turnovers. Well, the 2-3 zone by Kentucky was effective until Jim Barron's ball club started knocking in some threes, and Kentucky had to go man-to-man, -man, which was in favor of St. Bonaventure. The Bonnies will beat the Wildcats off the dribble, built themselves the lead. J.R. Bremer has been outstanding off the bench for Jim Barron's ball club. Well, Messiah will check in, so they take out a 6-11 player, following out as Van Passen. They substitute him with a 6-6 sophomore. So the size, whatever little it was for the Bonnies, completely gone right now against the Kentucky team, which came in as the tallest team of any of the 64 in this tournament. Well, it's really back to now again. Size versus quickness. And quickness has had an advantage this second half. Let's see if small ball can prevail with the Bonnies down by two. Small, uh, Saul Smith with four fouls has to make sure Wynn stays in front. Cyrus off balance, fade away. Smith was inside. Prado gets it, digging it out of the Kentucky hands of Saul Smith. And a foul called on Saul Smith. And he's got five, and he is gone. Well, and it all happens. It's created by lack of rebounding. Kevin? There's a missed shot. Kentucky has a chance for the rebound. And Saul Smith, point guard, wants to get back in the play. And when he gets back in there, he was surprised, and so was his coach, <laughs> that the whistle was blown and pointed his way. Saul Smith was going to play at Georgia as a walk-on and came with his dad to Kentucky. I think we touched on it in the first half how hard it is for that situation, especially under the microscope, which is Kentucky basketball, as you see each team. With three timeouts remaining, St. Bonaventure with 11 fouls, and Kentucky with eight. The possession arrow going toward UK with 1.29 to play in overtime. And Kentucky getting a bit of a surprise by 11 seed St. Bonaventure and their coach, Jim Barron. 
A little more pressure now on Blevins to handle the basketball or Prince or Bogans. If Blevins has the ball, Tim Wynn is the matchup. And Wynn, we've seen him smaller in stature, but quick with the hands and the feet. Bottle with the miss. Out of bounds it goes. Kentucky will inbound, leading 70-68. And with the quickness, here comes a full court pressure. Which you like? I, I do like. Saul Smith out of there. Your number one ball handler. And here comes Tayshawn Prince, who's been a hero for the Wildcats today, and he feeds it off to McGlure, make it to uh, Kamara. He gives to Blevins, taking the post of Smith. Bogans with the ball, working on a win. And now you run the clock yourself. Trying to get a mismatch right here. Bogans driving inside. Kamara had it knocked away. And a foul. Messiah might have got caught with the reach. It was. That's the second on him. You know, it's interesting. Bogans caught it on the wing at 6-5. Guarded by Tim Wynn at six at 5'10. Thought he could get baseline. Lost his footing. And I watch the reach in here. A little too late to see it. Take a look at Jim Barron. Most coaches, Kevin, you get to overtime, would like that whistle not to be heard. Like the players to decide the game on the court. Tiki tack reach ins, they wish uh, they weren't blown. And Kamara hits the first. We talked before about the size advantage for Kentucky. They've only out-rebounded St. Bonaventure by three today, 39 to 36. Second free throw, no good by Kamara. Staying in man-to-man -man defense. And St. Bonaventure with win driving on Levins and kicks it outside to Pato for three, short. Good defense, may have been tipped. Yeah, I think Prince might have got a hand on it. You forget that he's 6'9 and with a long reach. Auburn has Auburn just beaten Creighton 72 to 69, so Auburn advances. That is the fifth foul called on Prado, and that will be the final seconds of the game for him. He will leave. Well, Prado it took an early shot, I thought. Prince was right on him. Again, you forget a guy 6'9 right when he released it. Tayshawn with the quick hands made the block. Takes away an offensive weapon. What an afternoon he's had. 20 points. Prince at the free throw line. Held on to that ball too long. Didn't release it. Tayshawn Prince hits the back end of the free throw after getting fouled by Patricio Prado, who fouls out for St. Bonaventure. It's 72-68, the Wildcats by four in overtime. Seated St. Bonaventure trailing Kentucky in overtime, 72-68. Wildcats came in as a fifth seed. They just had a timeout. 45.9 seconds to play in overtime, and the Wildcats lead by four as you take a look at the timeout situation for both teams. Well, with Pato out, who has shot the ball extremely well, look for Bremer to get a look. It's off the top of your screen as Wynn tries to turn on the side of this call for the travel. J.P. Blevins, who's inserted for Saul Smith, his job, stay in front of Tim Wynn. Make him turn, make him turn again. Only 5'10", force him to the middle, force to turn over. Chucky has done it in overtime at the free throw line. There's 7 of 10, St. Bonaventure from the strike, 1 of 3. And another Bonnie foul. They had to stop the clock. 28.4 seconds. Now Keith Bogans goes to foul line. 65% free throw shooter. The freshman, 7 of 9 this afternoon. Solid ball game. Really solid first half. And the free throw shooting today for Kentucky. 16 of 25. And for St. Bonaventure, 5 of 11. So a pretty big disparity in the number of tries for both teams from the strike today. But not surprising because you don't beat Kentucky by taking it to the hole. They'll block a lot of shots. St. Bonaventure got back in this ball game and actually took the lead because of their perimeter shooting. Freshman Eric Segrist now checks in out of Poughkeepsie, New York. He is a freshman. 
good uh, shooter. Yeah, 33% three-point shooter as Bogans gets another. 73-68. Bogans from the free throw line, 8 of 11 today. Five points, still can be a two-possession game. And here is Seacrest, the freshman, missing the three. High kick off the rim. And it is a leading shot by Bremer. And should that be should three be free throws. Three free throws for Bremer, who just gambled, knowing that two defenders were right on him in a straight jacket. Well, the thing with Bremer did, he ball faked. And he, he got the long rebound. He's been the hot guy from outside. So he ball fakes. And Kamara jumped in the air, which Tubby Smith rolled his eyes and thought, you can't do that. So big free throws coming up for Bremer, a 65% free throw shooter this season and from the stripe today one of one 16 points for the Cleveland Heights native J.R. Bremer he's got two down well you forced a quick shot you forced a miss didn't get the offensive rebound here comes Robert Cheeks in the sophomore from Jersey City New Jersey and leaving the freshman Segrist now all of a sudden Bremer makes this one you're only down two 15 and a half seconds left go for a quick steal they missed now he gets the ball. Go for the quick foul. And they get it. And it goes on David Messiah Capers. And he's got four with 13.4 seconds remaining in overtime. Well, now you want to lengthen this game. Make Kentucky make free throws. John, you came out of the blocks today saying that Kentucky did not come out of the blocks. They were very sluggish to get underway. I thought they were a little lethargic. And sometimes that happens in the defensive end. So Bonaventure got off to a good start. We knew and we understand Kentucky has a hard time scoring the basketball. And you take away Desmond Allison's eight points and his ability to slash, someone has to pick up the slack. And so far this afternoon, Tayshawn Prince has been that guy with 26. Tomorrow, right, two of four from the free throw line, now two of five. He is a 68% free throw shooter. This is a big one here. It is. And Segrist will come back in and leave it. will be Robert Cheeks. You miss, you're down to one possession. You make, it's got to be a two possession game. It's that to go. It's a four point Kentucky Wildcat lead. Saya Capers gets it in to win. And working by Prince takes it inside. Oh, count it. What a shot. Why did Kentucky foul? I'm not sure he was trying to. I think he's trying to get out of the way. What Tim Wynn did, he took the ball into Kamara. Watch where he goes with this basketball. He's going to go across the lane and go into the body. Kamara trying to stay away, but he leaned that way. And the difficult finish. And reaction. Kamara fouls out of the game. 8.7 seconds remaining. A free throw still awaiting the Bonnies, and it's a 74-72 Kentucky two-point lead. And it all started though because JP Blevins allowed them to throw over the top. And he he gets Tim Wynn off on the run and can't catch up. Tim Wynn may be one of the top players in the country under six feet tall. He is a stick of dynamite. And today he oh, has been play. he's been so effective in so many ways in running this team. Not the big numbers for the leading scorer for the Bonnies. Has struggled shooting the ball. Only one of seven from three-point land. But defensively he's been everywhere. He has ten assists. Now he is a 78% free throw shooter, one of the top two free throw shooters on the team. And gets it to go. It's a one-point game. We're in overtime with 8.7 to play. As Kentucky. Breathe in heavy. They lead by just a point. With John Sunbold and Debbie Antonelli, Kevin Harlan from the Midwest region, first round, Cleveland, Ohio, and the Convocation Center. St. Bonaventure led early by 10, trailed by as many as 13, came back to tie it, and we're in overtime right now. And fifth seed Kentucky leads by one over 12th seed St. Bonaventure. Most important, Blevins got to make the pass from the inbound play. And he gets it into Bogans. If they got a foul out front, Messiah, then grabbing McGlure. With no time off the clock, and Kentucky leading by one. Well, McGlure now has to go to the foul line. Kentucky's running out of players. They well, came they, in today with nine. They haven't played two, so they really had a seven-man seven. rotation. Two guys are fouled out, so they're down to five guys that have played, and they are on the floor now. 
They don't want another overtime, but you got a one-point lead. Jamal McGlure goes a foul line, 69% free throw shooter, one of three this afternoon. And no matter what he does, it's a one-possession game. Kentucky has Bonnie. taken 29 free throw attempts today, John, for Tubby Smith. And only 15 attempts for St. Bonaventure. And a big hit for McGlure. Well, I will promise you this time, Blevins won't get in front of Tim Wynn and let throw over the top and let Wynn go coast to coast. 75-73 Kentucky trying to advance and they hit it. Good substitution right here. And they bring in the freshman Eric Segrist. You've got your three-point shooter. Segrist is one. Bremer's the other. Tim Wynn has struggled shooting it. Messiah Capers can knock it in. Here we go. Here we go. Is right. Tim Wynn takes it. Guarded by Prince. Off to Messiah Capers and a foul Oh on the shot with point four on the clock. I can't believe it. I'm almost a speechless. freshman. Marvin Stone is a freshman from Alabama, and he is called for the foul here. So oh, it looked like a pretty good block. Wow. And and Marvin couldn't believe it. You know, it's interesting. Last three possessions, they fouled on the three-point shot before three free throws. And they converted the three-point play traditionally. And there's a reaction from Tubby Smith. Can't Messiah, believe it himself. Messiah Capers, a 55% free throw shooter. He gets the first. He is a senior, a fifth-year senior, taking graduate courses now at St. Bonaventure from New Brunswick, New Jersey. And Kentucky's going to call the timeout and let the fifth-year senior think about it. Two free throws coming for the Bonnies. They're down by two. And Messiah Capers hits another free throw for St. Bonaventure. <laughs> it's, it's a one-point game time out for and Tubby? another timeout. Why not use them Well, 55% free throw shooter. He is two of two standing right there. Another timeout. Good call. But Kentucky is even in this position because of some very bad fouls. Kentucky is on a timeout, but John, like you said before going to break, Kentucky shouldn't even be in this position with some bad fouls. Well, they're up four. The missed shot by uh, St. Bonaventure offensive rebound. Ball fake. They get three shots from the three-point deal. Then they get a three-point play. Then they get another three shots. Here's a senior. His team hasn't been to the tournament in 22 years. A chance to tie it. And ties! At 76, point four seconds remaining. Bogans good if it goes. It doesn't double overtime. Tubby's got to find some more players. He's only got five left that are playing. He's got to bring probably two more to help him out. Welcome to the NCAA Whoa. Tournament. A fifth-year senior, a 55% free throw shooter, hitting three consecutive free throws, John, to send this game to its second overtime. Well, the emotion, the passion. Jim Baird, how <laughs> about the reaction? I love it. He's feisty. Oh, he, he was the point and guard for St. Bonaventure and their 77 NIT championship team. So he feels it. it. It runs through his veins, and he's back coaching at his alma mater. And Kentucky has handed St. Bonaventure another overtime. And the that Syracuse, game was over. Yes. The Syracuse fans are absolutely going crazy because they'd like to see Kentucky lose because the winner of this game would play the winner of the Syracuse game, which comes up right after this. Yeah, Syracuse, Samford, which will Samford. be an outstanding game. Abs Samford, one of the best shooting teams in college basketball. Right off the bat, it goes to the Bonnies. Suppose the uh, Bonnies have a little motion now, a little energy. We'll see what they do this uh, second overtime. Kentucky, we mentioned, they only have nine players. Two have fouled out. He's only played seven total. So the five guys on the floor now are the only five that have played this afternoon. Win for three, missed it all, and it sails out of bounds. And Tim Wynn and this half has to be more of a distributor. He has really struggled his shooting. One of eight from three-point land. So this second overtime, he's got to find teammates because he's got guys shooting it well. But Johnny's been setting people up to 10 assists and 10 points. And that's what he has to do. Don't rely on his three-point shot. Get everybody else. Get Bremer involved. Get Messiah Caper involved. Saul Smith is checked out, fouled out of the game, and so Levins is in there. Levins, a sophomore from Edmonton, Kentucky, feeds it over to the freshman Bogans. McGlure is in. Kamara is fouled out for the Kentucky Wildcats. Shot clock now is down to 12 as Levins faces win and feeds the Bogans and looks inside for McGlure. Got to go. And he works over Cyrus and hits it with a nice play. And there's where McGlure has been such a good player his senior season. 
He's developed that little jump hook. If you don't double team him, he'll make you pay. A minute gone in the second overtime. Kentucky, the fifth seed, leading St. Bonaventure, the 12th seed, 78-76. We talked about overtimes being possession games. You want a good one every time you have the basketball. The side keepers with some passing inside, accelerating and stopping on a dime and a foul, and all that juke and all that body movement drew a foul out of the Kentucky defense. Well, surprising, Prince only picks up his first personal. There have been a lot of fouls called late in this ballgame. Tayshawn, outstanding, we talked about earlier, 26 points, 6 rebounds. Got his ball club into the first overtime by the three-point shot he hit at the end of regulation. The hero for the moment, David Messiah Capers and the St. Bonaventure team, knowing that at least one number 12 seed has advanced in each of the last 11 NCAA tournaments, including just last year, John, Southwest Missouri State over fifth seed Wisconsin and Detroit, the 12th seed last year, over fifth seed UCLA. And it's not like they don't advance further. I mean, Southwest Missouri State went to the Sweet 16. They've had 18 of the 12 seeds beat five in the last 15 years. Ten of those went to Sweet 16. So it's not like it's a surprising deal. Nice timeout. defense as Prince tried to call a timeout, a turnover for Kentucky. Well, Blevins right, was caught up. Right when Blevins was going to pass it, Prince turned his back, won the timeout. Didn't see the ball. So, usually the cool cats, a team with the wealth of NCAA experience, turning it over. That's the first Kentucky turnover, though, in the last 10 minutes of play. And the side keepers drills another shot. And St. Bonaventure goes up 80-78. to 78. Looks like he has a feeling that Tayshaun Prince can't check him one-on-one. -on -one. He's taken him twice now. Prince only has one foul. And there's Prince with the fifth year senior, the sign keepers on him, swithering inside, and then tapped up and in by freshman Marvin Stone. If Prince or Bogans can put it on the floor and get it to the rim, there's going to have to be help defense. That allows, allows Stone or McGlure to get to the rim offensive rebound. We're tied at 80 in overtime number two from Cleveland in the Midwest region. Let's see if they go back to Messiah Capers off the screen down low, off the pinup. Here he comes off the weak side. Been good off the dribble. Comes up now to Vidal Masai. Win shot clock at five. Working on Blevins, launching a three. Rebound by the freshman Stone. There are times, Kevin, you get caught when the shot clock goes down. You've got to get into your offensive sets earlier, quicker, get to the play. Then for Kentucky, Kamara has fouled out, as has the coach's son, Saul Smith, Blevins. Up and grinding with Gotta be careful, five seconds. Here's Bogan, shot clock down to 13. Working on Bremer, sliding inside and into the teeth of the St. Bonaventure defense, and a foul is called. As there are three bodies right there, and the foul here goes on Messiah for the fourth time. And coming up, we have Central Connecticut State against two-seed Iowa State with maybe the best single player in the tournament, Marcus Spicer of the Cyclones, the Big 12 regular season and postseason champions. And Southeast Missouri State against LSU in a great wealth of basketball the rest of the day and deep into the night here on CBS. Bogans again hit, and Bogans is now 9 of 13 from the free throw line and saved by St. Bonaventure. Well, possessions again. Bonnies need a better one than they had last time. Here's the side capers, has the last seven points for the Bonnies, launching a three. Rebound, reeled in by Clevens with a minute and a half to play in the second overtime. Not the shot they wanted, Kevin, once again. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Messiah Caper is not a deep, deep three-point shooter. Good shooter, though, 42% from the three. Clevens oh, had it knocked away inside by Vidal Messiah. Streaming the other way, J.R. Bremer, and foul as he took it inside, and Prince was the one to belt him, and he picks up his second foul for the Wildcats. Not sure. Tim Wynn might have gotten his hand on another basketball. Talked about his ability to steal, get his hands involved, quick feet. Might have made a quick reach behind Blevins. John, we told a great story before about this kid who grew up here in Cleveland, Ohio, from Cleveland Heights. Played summer league basketball. In this gym. In this gym. And, uh, you know, has made an impact. And they were down the second half. Big numbers, 13. He came in, gave him some energy, made some jump shots, put it on the floor, penetrated. 17 points this afternoon, 14 of them the second half. 
two of four from the free throw line. Now two of five, missing clutch free throws there, but saved. Well, the surprising thing, good rebound by Cyrus over the top of 6'10 McGlure and 6'10 Marvin Stone. Same Are they tired? Well, that's got a question. Do they have anything left in the tank? Messiah Capers leads to Messiah. Under a minute to play. Wildcats lead by one in overtime number two. Wynn working on Clevins. Takes him in. Got the fake. A seductive move, but the shot won't go. Stone tried to save it. Fell out of bounds. Two seconds on the shot clock. St. Bonaventure inbounding with two seconds to shoot. Kentucky did not save the ball. Yeah, no possession. Timeout taken, 47 seconds in overtime, number two in mid-seat Kentucky, leading by one. Kentucky with a single timeout remaining. St. Bonaventure has two, Kevin Harlan, John Sunbow. And two seconds on the shot clock with which to work for St. Bonaventure. And the timeout taken by the Bonnies. Now they've got one left, and Kentucky has one. As Jim Barron, their coach, wants to talk things over on a very crucial inbound. John, what do you think was said by Tubby Smith? Two seconds on the shot clock. Switch all screens. Make them beat you outside. Don't get cut back door. Jim Barron saying, if you do set a screen, roll to the basket. See if we can get an easy one. Two seconds to shoot. 47 seconds to play in this double overtime. And it's blocked. Bremer's shot is blocked. And the shot clock violation. And it goes over to Kentucky. Each team with the timeout. And the Wildcats with the one-point lead. Well, they're checking the clock, but... I don't know what the game clock was. I know there's two seconds on the shot clock. Good defense by Tayshawn Prince to come out and challenge the shooter. Not going to change it. And some full court pressure employed by the Bonnies. 40 seconds to play. And Prince has to be valuable as a ball handler. Tim Wynn on Blevins is not a good matchup for this Wildcat team. Six nine. He is a pretty adept ball handler. Yeah, it's pretty good. Bogans is the other guy. Take okay. some pressure off Blevins. Let Blevins spot up, spot up in case they need an open jump shot. Bogans has it now. A difference of nine seconds. Game clock to shot clock. Bogans makes the move. Working on Bremer who falls. Lost it inside. And a whistle. Out of bounds, they say. Nine seconds to shoot. Kentucky will inbound. 18 seconds to play. Much to the chagrin of Jim Barron, the St. Bonaventure coach. Yeah, interesting call. Couldn't tell from our angle. Logan's gets it off to Prince. Again, Kentucky leads by one. Shot clock at five. Good hands. Backed away by Messiah Capers. Picked up by Bogans with a great shot. One of the first balls that have bounced Kentucky's way this second half. Down by three. Now, you can either foul early, but don't foul on the shot like they did the end of overtime. For the tie from Wynn. Can't get it to go. Prince holds on to it. Quickly fouled by Cyrus. With 1.1 seconds left on the clock, Kentucky leads by three and will shoot free throws at the other end. And Tim Wynn had an opportunity. It has been a tough afternoon shooting the basketball. One of ten from three-point land, but got a wide open look. Wynn took four shots in the second overtime and did not hit in the Chevrolet players of the game. J.R. Bremer from Cleveland with 17 points and three assists of St. Bonaventure and Tayshawn Prince of Kentucky with a glittering 26.6 rebound performance. <laughs> Kevin, did you notice how far the Wildcats were from the guy shooting a three? Huh? <laughs> they wouldn't be in this position no. had they not committed the silly fouls yeah. in the first overtime. They had two fouls on three-point shots in the last minute of the first overtime, which put St. Bonaventure on the free throw line, and they made all six of those free throws. And there was another three-point play, traditional mix in that. This game should have been over a while ago. Kentucky's going to survive. And a big sigh of relief. What a great season for St. Bonaventure, Jim Barrett. And, and the way their ball club came back this afternoon. Down 13 the second half. This whole crowd rallied them. Outstanding effort. Eighty-four to eighty, second overtime. St. Bonaventure, first time in the NCAA tournament in 22 years, as Tayshawn Prince puts it in, and the Kentucky Wildcats will advance. They say cats have nine lives. The Kentucky Wildcats have eight left. Survive and move on, right? And they did. 
A spectacular way to begin the NCAA tournament here at the Midwest region. And now Kentucky will advance to play Saturday against the winner of Syracuse Sanford. Now for Debbie Antonelli and John Sunbull, Kevin Harlan saying so long from Cleveland, Ohio. The final score in double overtime. Fifth seeded Kentucky 85, number 12, St. Bonaventure 80.